the brain itself, meaning the brain tissue, does not have any sensory neurons. What do I mean by that? Well, if I touch the top of my hand, I can feel that. If I want to sense my heartbeat, if I work at it, I can feel that. If I want to sense how I feel internally at the level of my stomach, is it full, is it empty, am I hungry, is it acidic, does it ache or does it feel pleasant, et cetera, I can sense that. And that's because we have sensory neurons on our skin and in our body, et cetera. We also have sensory neurons in our eyes that let us perceive things externally. We have no sensory neurons on our brain. This is one of the reasons why you can remove the skull and do brain surgery on somebody who's wide awake and be poking around in there and they don't need any anesthetic on the brain itself. They need anesthetic for the incision site, but they don't need anesthetic on the brain because it has no feeling. You have emotions, but there's no feeling. So normally we are perceiving and paying attention to what we are sensing either externally, sights and sounds, again, exteroception or internally, interoception, touch, et cetera. But by focusing our perception and our attention, not on our bodily surface, like a body scan, but to a point a couple centimeters or inches behind our forehead, we essentially are bringing that attentional, that perceptual spotlight to a location in which there is no sensation. There's nothing to feel there. And when we do that by closing our eyes and focusing on that quote unquote third eye center, which is the prefrontal cortex, to be quite honest, when we do that, something else happens. And what happens is when we are not thinking about and perceiving our sensations, because there are none there, our thoughts and our emotions and our memories sort of mushroom up. They more, a better way to put it would be that they geyser up and take on more prominence in our perception. What I mean by this is that normally, you know, I'm not thinking about uh, the contact point between me and this chair, but as I'm speaking, I'm in contact with the chair and those neurons are firing. But if I focus my energy and attention on them, they're gonna fire the same, but more of my perception goes there. Similarly, I'm thinking things all the time, you are too, and I'm perceiving things all the time and I'm remembering things all the time and I'm anticipating things all the time about the future. But by focusing my attention on the one organ for which I have no sensation, that is my brain, well then thoughts, feelings and memories, feelings meaning emotional feelings, start to grow in their prominence, in my awareness and in my perception. And so this is why when you sit down to a meditative practice, if it's a meditative practice where you close your eyes or you're focused on that third eye center, where you're focused on your brain, as opposed to your bodily surface or something external to you, the thoughts seem to come by in waves and they can almost be overwhelming. It's very hard to as it's often described, just sit back and watch your thoughts go by because there are so many of them. Actually, the best way to stop thinking is to really focus on something external or to focus on sensation. That's less thinking than it is perceiving senses. Okay, so I don't want this to get too abstract. When people talk about the third eye center, they're not talking about the pineal, they're talking about prefrontal cortex. And when you direct your own attention to the very area of your brain that directs attention, there's nothing to sense there. The only things that will become present to you are feelings, emotions, that is, thoughts and memories. And they will often arrive in a, what seems to be a very disorganized fashion. And the reason they arrive in somewhat disorganized fashion is because normally we just don't perceive things that way. Normally we are splitting our attention, our perception that is, to multiple things, our sensation and our thoughts. When we put all of our perception into our thoughts, we see how disorganized, how wandering they are and how, in fact, how random and intrusive those can be. Again, random and intrusive. And much of what we talked about in that paper earlier, the one where they asked people, what are you doing and what are you feeling and how happy or how unhappy you are? What they discovered was that most people are sort of in their head a lot. They're not really present to what they're doing, which leads me to the statement that I believe, at least based on the data, that paper included, that most people have an interoceptive bias. They're focused more on what's going on internally than they are focused on what's happening externally. There are certainly people who, for the opposite is true, but I think that this is an issue because we hear so often about the need to do a meditation practice that allows us to focus inward. 
and that we're getting yanked around by all the stressors of life, et cetera, et cetera. And we are, we're getting yanked around by all the stressors and demands of life. But as we do that, we tend to be very focused on what's happening with us. The data clearly point to the fact that being mindful and being aware can enhance one's level of presence and happiness. But we can go so far as to say that being mindful and aware of what's happening, not just with us, but external to us in our immediate environment, that includes what other people are saying and doing, that also can really enhance our sense of well-being and happiness. At least that's what the data point to.